I have said for quite some time now, the government is going to start coming for big tech. Now, I wish they would have done it a little sooner when we saw the warning signs and prevented these things from happening, but at least they're doing something. In one of the latest stories, Google must pay up to $200 million to settle a Federal Trade Commission YouTube investigation because they were violating child privacy laws. Now, I'll admit, man, there are a lot of problems on YouTube. I I absolutely respect the platform exists. I think it is a net positive. I am using it right now. So listen, you're hearing, hearing me from the power of the internet. But there are a lot of problems with social media and the bias and the narrative. And most importantly, beyond all of this, the most important thing, we can put politics aside here, children's privacy and protections. There have been a bunch of scandals involving kids getting fed freaky videos. And in this case, kids having their privacy violated by the platform that only responds to media. That's about it. Well, at least now they've got to pay up. So let's read this story from Politico. They say, Google has agreed to pay between 150 and $200 million to resolve an FTC investigation over alleged violations of a children's privacy law, according to a person familiar with the matter. The FTC voted three to two along party lines. Wow. Which parties? To approve the settlement, sending it over to the Justice Department as part of the review process, the person confirmed. Details about other terms of the settlement were not immediately available. The settlement is the latest move from the FTC meant to crack down on Silicon Valley privacy violations. Facebook last month paid $5 billion to resolve an expansive agency probe into data practices. And and I I want to make this point. Look, I think privacy comes first. I think censorship is an issue. I think bias is an issue. And I think we need to be calling out when people get unfairly taken down. But I kind of feel like privacy comes first. And I'll tell you why. These big platforms, by invading our privacy, can actually use data to manipulate our perceptions beyond this. So in my opinion, the censorship comes after, sort of, the privacy stuff. These big tech firms are probably already controlling our opinions and predicting our actions before we even realize it. And and going into our private data, selling our private data, is the first step to manipulating our behavior. There are companies that sell the service of behavioral manipulation. You know, I, 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 I talked about this before and I think they got mad. Well, they offered to do like, a, like an interview and explain it, but no, no, listen, man. These tech companies want you on their platform. They want you on their app and they want you addicted. That's why Twitter won't solve any problems. That's why these platforms are biased. Think about it. They know that conservatives will make fun of offensive content pointed their way. If someone says something offensive, a conservative will make fun of them. Hey, that means the left and the right are using the platform. But if a conservative makes fun of someone on the left, that person on the left will leave like like Will Wheaton did in outrage that Alex Jones on the platform. That's why they censor the right more than the left. It's about what's going to keep people active. Let's read a little bit more. The industry has more broadly seen its fortune sour in Washington as President Donald Trump and Associates. Democratic presidential candidates and lawmakers of both parties have all pilloried tech for its perceived failures to stem hate speech, extremism, privacy flaps, alleged bias, and a wealth of other ills. You see how there's a contradiction here? Do we go after their bias or their hate speech? You can't do both. And therein lies a big problem. But I'll say this to the, to the, to the social network companies. If you just held a free speech standard, you could at least have a legal defense. But when you play both sides you lose. They say, many of those same critics dinged the FTC over the Facebook penalties, calling into question both the impact of the $5 billion sum on the moneyed social media giant and the efficacy of the settlement terms. A coalition of privacy groups had complained to the FTC that YouTube violated the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act by collecting personal information about minors and using it to target advertisements without getting consent from the parents. Creepy, very creepy. Leave the kids out of it, man. The settlement dwarfs the FTC's largest fine to date for COPPA violations, 5.7 million, levied in February against the operators of Musical.ly. Oh, wow, really? The China-based social video app that's become a juggernaut since rebranding as TikTok, and maybe that's why. Oh, really? I didn't know that was Musical.ly. Huh. Oh, you learn something new every day. Nevertheless, several of the groups behind the original COPPA complaint against YouTube viewed the settlement skeptically. They should levy a fine which both levels the playing field and serves as a deterrent to future COPPA violations. This fine would do neither, 
Josh Golan, executive director of coalition leader, the campaign, coalition leader, the campaign for a commercial free childhood, said in a statement, noting that a fine in the $150 million to $200 million range is the equivalent of two to three months of YouTube ad revenue. Is that how much they make every month? Wow. It's a lot of money. My understanding, though, is that YouTube is a loss leader, meaning that YouTube wants to use it to dominate the market, but they subsidize it through other Google products because it's expensive to do video. The pun- Well, I guess it's also this, too. They're hoping that compression technology will make it much, much cheaper, and then the profit will turn around in a few years. The punishment should have been at least half a billion dollars, Jeff Chester, executive director of the Center for Digital Democracy, told Politico. It's scandalous. It sends a signal that you, in fact, can break a privacy law and get away largely scot-free. Well, you're, you're asking for what, to double the fine? But it is true. Typically, when it comes to FTC violations, many of these companies will just pay the fine and laugh all the way to the bank. There are companies that sell these really annoying things called like balance bracelets or something. And they use an illusion. Um, it's like a magician trick called the center of gravity illusion to make it seem like it's got magical powers and you can't be knocked over if you're, if you're wearing it. They get fined for basically like wide scale fraud. Every time the companies do this, the FTC will issue a fine. They'll pay a few million dollars. The company gets shut down. They rebrand and relaunch and do the same thing. Rinse, repeat, etc. Because they still make a ton of money. The government gets a cut. They get a cut. They defraud the, the, the clientele. And then they just make a new company and call it something slightly different. They'll call it copper or quartz or whatever. They go on to say, Meanwhile, Mark Rotenberg, president of fellow complainant, the Electronic Privacy Information Center, said the key will be the terms the FTC imposes on YouTube under the settlement. The critical challenge for the FTC is whether it has the ability to restrain business practices that violate privacy. He said, imposing large fines does not address that problem, especially when you consider, is YouTube making money on ads alone or are they selling data to other advertisers? Now, it's within their best interest to keep that data proprietary because they sell ads, but it also makes sense that Google uses that data across the various platforms and they can track your behaviors and even manipulate your behaviors. So there's a lot more money than just what YouTube makes in ad revenue. Spokespeople for Google and the FTC declined to comment. Bloomberg recently reported that YouTube is finalizing plans to end targeted advertisements on videos aimed at minors. The Washington Post was first to report the party line vote approving a multi-million dollar settlement last month. And I'll make this point too. Remember when you were a kid and the, you'd be watching cartoons and it would, it would do the song where like after these messages, we'll be right back. Apparently they had to tell you a commercial was coming because kids couldn't tell the difference. So there's no barrier like that online. Kids are just inundated with whatever crap the companies want to sell. And, the, and these platforms are taking their data and then using it to target parents because they know, now they know about the kid, they can target the parents, say, buy these specific things. They go on to say, reps David Cicilline and Jeffrey Fortenberry, we got we got a bipartisan support here. This is a good thing. Recently urged the FTC to require that videos directed at children can be moved off YouTube's main platform and onto YouTube Kids. That's the company's dedicated service for kid-friendly videos, which YouTube just made available on the internet after offering it through a mobile app and smart TVs for the last several years. I also understand they started doing this really clever thing where they use basic multiplication to make sure you're the right age. It's kind of sad, however. I saw one, it was like, hey, if you want to use this app, what's eight times three? What's messed up is that, so what? If your parents homeschool, homeschool, homeschool you as a kid, you can use it earlier? Actually, maybe it makes sense. I don't know. I thought it was a clever thing. They say the lawmakers also want the FTC to mandate annual independent audits for YouTube to monitor compliance with the terms of the settlement and to block it from launching new children's services without outside review. COPPA author said Ed Markey, who's made similar recommendations as to what the FTC should require of YouTube as part of the settlement, said in a statement that he's dubious the agency was tough on the company given the party line split. Quote, I look forward to reviewing the requirements placed upon Google in this settlement, but I am disappointed that the commission appears poised to once again come out with a partisan settlement that falls short of the commission's responsibility to consumers and risks normalizing corporate bad behavior. YouTube absolutely is guilty of bad behavior. But what's disconcerting to me, and I'll stress, is the kids stuff. You know, there was a big scandal where kids were being fed really really creepy and weird videos, and it was called Elsagate. Now we have the kids being hit with privacy violations. We also have this really weird thing, which I want to tread carefully on, where videos of kids 
in suggestive positions are being recommended to creepy, creepy, creepy people. If you know what I'm trying to say, YouTube has an obligation, first and foremost, in my opinion, to kids. And it's not just about, you know, privacy and advertisements, but it is about the bias. What are they showing to kids and are they manipulating their behavior? I'm going to leave it there. I, I do try to keep these segments a little bit shorter. So stick around. One more segment coming up in a few minutes and I will see you all shortly.